Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Space Invaders game in just one episode. Also, it's thundering out, so sorry if you hear that. So you play as this little alien thing. Now that I think about it, it kind of looks like the little android dude. Don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing and leave a comment down below. And as always, there'll be a link in the description to play the final game and check out the code or get my art there. But anyway, let's get coding. Okay, so I have five sprites. Player, player bullet, enemies, enemy bullet, and stars. Within player, I have this one costume alien thing. And player bullet, I have two costumes, which I'll only be using one of them. The first one is the pixel art bullet. The second one is the pixel art bullet in vector mode with a little glow around it. And I did the vector mode to make this glow. So to do that, just design your pixel art, copy and paste it in here, and then you can add the glow to it. Enemies is basically the same exact thing as the player, except it's red and it has two costumes. It has alien one and then alien one flap. As you can see, it's literally just like, I really don't know. It's just flat. An enemy bullet is the same as the player bullet. As you can see here, it has bullet two with the glow and it's just red. Then stars is kind of hard to see, but if I fill in background, you can see that it's just some random stars all around. Now for this game, the pixel art size is going to be 250. So make sure you set all these sprites size to 250. And the last one I forgot about is the background is just a black box like this. So now you can actually see the star. Go into the player and pull out a wind green flag clicked and pull out a broadcast and and name this one start and then pull out a broadcast and do new message called reset so start is going to start the actual gameplay loop and reset is going to reset the player and variables when i receive the start we are going to set size to 250 and then show then we are going to wait zero seconds forever and now let's make the movement so make a for the sprite only variable called x speed and now click enter and now change the x speed by one instead of that we need to change it by if we're pressing the key or not. A quick way we can do this is key D minus key A press. So let's make sure this works by showing the X speed variable and pressing A, which as you can see makes it go negative, and pressing the D makes it go positive. And when we don't press anything, as you can see, it just stays still. Now we need to make the player move by that variable, so change X by X speed. Next, we are going to turn 15 degrees and change this to 90 minus the direction divided by 2. So this will make it smoothly turn to 90 degrees. Then we we are going to turn x speed times 1.6 degrees. Now this is never going to slow down so we need to set x speed to x speed times 0 0.86. So now as you can see we can move right to left with the arrow keys and it turns smoothly and also moves smoothly. Now we're going to when I receive reset set x speed to 0 and then go to 0 negative 145. Now you can see in the beginning it stops everything and goes back to the start. Now let's make the bullets to another when I receive start forever if mouse is down create clone of player bullet wait 0.15 second this will make it to where we can create clones of the bullets but the bullets aren't going to do anything so go into the bullets and add a wind green flag click to hide when I receive reset go ahead and delete this clone now when I start as a clone show and then go to back make sure you switch costume to bullet 2 clear the graphic effects go to the player and now let's test this out every time we click it creates this huge bullet right at the player. So that is awesome. And we actually are going to set the size to 100 also. So now you can see it's actually the right size. Now add a forever loop and let's change the Y by 15 and then check if the Y position is greater than 175. Then we're going to delete this clone. So that will make it to where it'll move up and then check if it's at the top of the screen. And if it is, it'll get rid of itself. You can see that we can now hold down the mouse button and we can can shoot a bullet that will go to the top of the screen. Now let's add in these stars, and these stars are the exact same stars that are in my shoot 'em up game. When green fire clicked, show, set size to 250, go to 00, zero forever, clear graphic effects, repeat 100 times, and then change the ghost effect. And then we want to make it go to a random spot, duplicate this, and change the ghost effect by negative one. So this will make it fade back in. Now you can see that the stars will go to a random spot, slowly fade out, and then fade in in a different spot. So now that we have that, the last thing to add is the enemies. Now this is where basically all of the complex stuff comes in. So we want to do when I receive the start hide and let's make a block that's going to create the enemies. So create a block called create enemies and do run screen without refresh. Add a colon and add a label called amount X. Now an input called amount X, a label with a colon called amount Y, and then an input called amount Y, a label called spacing with a colon, and then an input called spacing. So 
once you click OK, you should see a nice big block that's labeled nicely. And now we are going to go to 0, negative 125. Now we are going to repeat amount Y. Then we are going to repeat amount X divided by 2. Change X by spacing and then create clone of myself. Then we are going to set X to 0. Next, add a when I start as a clone and go ahead and do show and go to front. Now pull out a create enemies right here. Set the amount X to 10, which is how many wide, and the amount Y to 7. Then the spacing is going to be 30. And we're actually going to set the Y to negative 25, not 125. And now you can see that it creates some clones on the right side. Now we need to make it create the rest of the clones going to the left. So duplicate this, get rid of this, and then change it by spacing times negative 1. So now you can see that it creates all of the clones that we want, and it's centered as well. Now we are going to, at the very end, right here, change the Y by spacing. Then we're going to set X to zero. Now you can see that it actually creates all of the clones going upwards, but we have this problem. As you can see here, it skips the very middle one. So to fix this, add a create clone of myself right underneath this set X. So now you can see that it creates a whole entire row of clones. So now that we have this, let's set up the clones. So make a for the sprite only variable called clone X, and then another for the sprite only variable called clone Y. So these are the x and y position. Next, set the clone x and clone y to x position and y position. Then we can do all this. Then switch costume to alien 1. And now let's make it change color on the way up. So make a variable or the sprite only variable called row. Set the row to 0 right here and change the row by 1 right here. Now we can set the color effect to row times 25. Now you can see that it changes the color effect. Next, forever, change x by clone x minus x position divided by 3. Now duplicate that and change the y by clone y minus y position divided by 3. Now at the bottom here go to x0 y y position of player plus 50. This makes it look like it just smoothly flies in onto screen. Next let's make a for the sprite only variable called clone size. Then let's set the clone size to 250 right here. Now we are going to forever change size by clone size minus the size divided by 5. Now let's make it to where we can actually shoot down the clone. So add another when I start as a clone forever. If we are touching player bullet, set the clone size to 0. Wait 0 0.06 seconds. Delete this clone. Now we should see that we can actually shoot down these aliens, but it's really overpowered because our bullets just keep going. Go into the bullets and add an if up above here and detect if we are touching the enemies. Then we are going to set the ghost effect to 100%, wait 0 seconds, delete this clone. Now you should see that when we shoot the enemies, it actually deletes the bullet as well as the enemy. Next, when I receive start, delete this clone in the enemies. That will make it reset. And now we need to add a wait 0 seconds right before the create enemies right here. Next, we need a variable to keep track of if it's a clone or not. So make a for the sprite variable is clone. Now in the beginning, set is clone to false and set is clone to true in the when I start as a clone. Now we can make it actually move. So add a forever loop right here, a wait one second, broadcast, new message, name is update with a space dash space enemies and click OK. So every one second it will update the enemies. So let's add a when I receive update enemies. If is clone is equal to true, then we are going to next costume. Now you can see that every one second all of these switch to a different costume so it looks like they're flapping. Now we need to change clone X by make a new for all sprite variable called move speed. And we're going to change the clone X by move speed. Then up here set the move speed to 10. Now you can see that every one second our clones move to the right. Now this is all fine, but once they make it all the way to the right, you can see, well, they just keep going and then they bundle up over there. We need a for all sprite variable called turn and another for all sprite variable called should turn. Now in this loop right before the broadcast, we should, we need to set should turn to false. Then after we should set turn to should turn. Then 
if turn equals to true, we are going to set move speed, move speed times negative one. So it will swap it. Now in the when I receive, add an if else and check if turn equals to true. If it is, then we're going to move this down here, duplicate this and change the clone Y by negative 25. So this will make it go down if they are turning. Then we are going to check if absolute value of clone X is greater than 190, we are going to set the should turn to true. One thing I did wrong is right here, it should be a broadcast and wait. Once they get to the right, here we go. As you can see, they move down and then they start moving to the left. And once they make it all the way to the left, hopefully they should move down and start moving to the right. Okay, so here they are. Yep, they move down and then they start moving to the right. So this game is a little unfair because the aliens can't fight back yet. So let's make it to where they have a chance to shoot every time they move. So right above this if statement, we can check if pick random 1 to 11 is equal to 1. And if it is, then we're going to shoot. So to do this, we need a list for all sprites called bullet X copy that name and make another one called bullet y and another one called bullet color and all of those are for all sprites in this if add the clone x to bullet x and add the clone y to bullet y then last but not least add row times 25 to bullet color now change y by 5 and change size by 10 now in the very beginning here let's go ahead and delete all of all three of those lists so delete all of bullet x bullet y and bullet color now we need to make it to where every time there's something in that list a new bullet will spawn at that position and then clear it from that list so go into the bullet and add a wing green fight click hide forever then clear graphic effects up top make a for the sprite only variable called is clone and set that is clone to false up top here forever broadcast new message named update space dash space and do bullet now when i receive the update bullet make a new block called bullet. Make sure you click this run without screen refresh and put that bullet right here. Now add an if else checking if the is clone is equal to false. So if this is the sprite, then we're going to repeat until length of bullet x is equal to zero, which means we've cleared out all of the items in that list. Make two variables keeping track of the x and y. Make a for the sprite only variable called bullet x and then another one called bullet y for the sprite only of course. And set the bullet x to item 1 of bullet x, set bullet y to item 1 of bullet y, set the color effect to item 1 of bullet color, create clone of myself, and now delete 1 of bullet x, delete 1 of bullet y, and delete 1 of bullet color. Now we don't want this to do 1, we want it to do the very last item in the list. So to do this, you just need to do item length of that list. So item length of bullet x of bullet x, item length of bullet y of bullet y, and then item length of bullet color of bullet color and now do the same thing for these down here so delete item bullet x of bullet x delete item length of bullet y of bullet y delete item length of bullet color of bullet color so make sure yours looks the same as mine otherwise this won't work else if it is the clone then we are going to change the bullet y by negative five so it'll keep moving and then we're going to check if the bullet y is less than negative 180 at the bottom of the screen and it's going to delete this clone then we need to do a go to and do bullet x in bullet y. Last but not least, when I start as a clone, show and set is clone to true. You can see that every time one of these shoots, it makes a new bullet at that spot and it makes it the right color. Now this is way too big, so let's set the size to 100 up here. Now you can see that the bullets are the correct size. Basically what this is doing is it's going to do this until there's no more items in the list. It's going to set the X and Y to the very last item in each of the X and Y lists. And it's going to make a new bullet and delete that last one it just made. And and then if it's a bullet, then it's going to just move down and delete itself if it's at the bottom of the screen. So now let's make it to where the player can get knocked out when it touches the bullet. Go into the player, add an if statement in this loop right here, and check if we're touching enemy bullets. Then we're going to broadcast start, so it restarts the game, and then reset everything. Now you can see that if we are touching a bullet, it will restart the game, but it won't clear the enemy bullets. So go into the bullets and add a when I receive start, delete this 
clone. Okay, so now you should see that when we get hit by a bullet, it should reset everything, everything. There we go, that works better. Now let's give yourself a score variable. Make a for all sprite variable called score. Now double click that so it looks nice and move it to the bottom left. Next, in this reset, set that score to zero. Then in the enemies right here, delete the clone, change that score by one. Now you can see in the very beginning, every time we shoot an enemy, it gives us one score as you can see in the bottom left. And if we get shot, it resets everything. We also need to check if the enemies make it to the bottom of the screen, it will reset. So right here, add an if statement and check if the clone Y is less than negative 150, then broadcast start and broadcast reset after that. So let's go ahead and make sure this all works by making our player invincible, take out this if loop, and then change this weight one second to zero seconds. So now that you can see the enemies are moving fast, and if we go ahead and get some score, then they make it to the bottom, it resets everything, and our score gets reset as well, and that is working properly. So make it wait one second again, and then put the if back. So now let's make it to where once we clear out all the enemies, it will reset and spawn all the clones again. So make a for all sprite variable called total enemies, and set that total enemies in the beginning to zero. Now when I start as a clone, change the total enemies by one, and then when it gets deleted right here, change the total enemies by negative one. Now you can see that if we show total enemies, it keeps track of how many enemies there are on screen at one time. Now in the player, let's add an if statement, total enemies is less than one, which means we've cleared out all the enemies, then we are only going to broadcast start. So if we broadcast start and reset, it's going to get rid of all of our score, and it'll make us go to the middle. But if we just do start, it will only make new enemies, and it will leave our score alone. Now let's make this wait like 0.1 seconds and test this out. And if we get shot, it resets our score and then makes new enemies. But I'm going to give myself a cheat real quick to let us clear out the enemies easier. Hopefully once I clear out the enemies, it shouldn't reset the player, but it should make a new wave. And a new wave gets created and we keep all of our previous score. Just like last time, if we lose again, it will reset the score and the enemies as well. Now hopefully it makes sense why we separated the reset and the start. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. But anyway, this has been Owen and I am out.